Okay, so here we are in the final episode of this short series on creating this beautiful tropical terrain. Let's get going, eh? Now that we have our plants, grasses and trees established, we need to add in some rocks for variety. As with all the vegetation steps so far, we start out by creating a new spawner, adding it to our scene and then to our biome object. We're going to want our rocks to appear pretty much everywhere, but fewer on the slopes as they'll roll down. To achieve this, we'll add a slope spawner, which will exclude the steeper slopes. The tropical forest pack comes with a set of decent looking rocks, so we'll add them to our rock spawner as prefabs. For each one, we'll provide a chance of it spawning and randomize the position that it will appear within a kind of square area. This will mean that each time this spawns, we'll get a variety of different rocks spawning together, but never in the same configuration. We'll also change the rotation of these rocks as well for a bit more variety. Once the spawn is set up, let's spawn and see how they turn out. Ah, okay. Look here. The bottom of these rocks don't actually have any sides. There's no mesh there. Um, that's good in many ways because it means that they're more performant, but it's bad because we're rotating them in all axes, which means sometimes we've got the insides of a hollow rock, basically. We're going to need to change that. It means we can't rotate in the X or Z axis. I also think there's too many rocks spawning together, so let's adjust the spawn probability for each rock downwards a little bit inside our spawner. Okay, let's spawn again. Okay, the rotation looks better now, but they're appearing a little bit too frequently across the terrain, I think. To reduce the number of places where they'll spawn, let's add in a noise mask. I'd also like to see more variation in the rocks themselves, so I'm going to add in a random scale factor for each of the individual prefabs. Let's spawn and take another look. Okay, yeah, they look much better now. So it's time to set up the cinematic fly-through. I'm going to do this pretty quickly on the video because I do have a much deeper dive into how to use these two tools together and how to install them and so on. So that's linked up above now. If you want more information, go watch that after this video is finished. What we do is we import Pegasus and then we can add the Pegasus capture component into our scene. By default, this will pick up our main camera in the scene and that's okay for us because that's the one that we want our Pegasus fly through to control. The first thing to do is to move the camera in our scene to the approximate start position of our fly through. So we're going to move the scene view to the right place, select the fly cam and then hit shift control F to move the cam into that position. Now we can set up our camera flight path. I'm going to play this back really fast because it's really simple to do. What you do is you hit play and then you fly your camera around to each of the spots that you want to say, yeah, this looks good. This is a nice camera angle. And then you hit P and you fly to your next spot and then you hit P and then you fly to your next spot and then you hit P and you keep doing that until you've done your whole flight path. Once you've set up all the positions on your path, you hit stop and then on your Pegasus capture object, hit the create Pegasus button and hit play. As you can see in this speeded up playback, Pegasus automatically plays back the camera motion between each of the points at which you hit P earlier on. So that gives us the exact same fly through on every play that we have. We can now fine tune the positions of each of those points by moving them around in our scene view and that allows us to really fine tune the flight of the camera. It also allows us to change the direction the camera is looking slightly or even a lot if you want to at each of the points along the way. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do. You can control the roll of the camera and the speed and so on. Again, I have that deeper dive video that you can go check out later if you want to. 
Once you've done all that, hit play, review the fly through again, and if necessary, iterate on that process. Just keep going back through. It's being recorded for you, so you can keep messing around until you get it just right. Now that we have our flight path recorded for the camera in our cinematics, it's time to upgrade our lighting. I really like Enviro as it adds a lot more quality and a lot more control over what you're doing with the weather effects. Open up the Gaia Manager and select the Extensions tab. Assuming you've got Enviro installed, you'll see an option under there for the publisher of Enviro. Click on the Add Enviro Standard since we're using the standard rendering pipeline here. Instantly you'll see improved lighting. Now I'm actually going to use my own Enviro profile to fine tune things. That profile is downloadable, along with all of the other configurations I've created for this video series. You can find them in the GitHub repo that's linked in the description below, so do feel free to go grab them and play around with them. What you can see here in this speeded up piece of the video is me setting that up. Basically what I'm doing is I'm setting the clouds to high quality, I'm ensuring that we get some appropriate weather, basically sunny, <laughs> we're in the tropics, and some heavy rain now and again. Making sure it's summer, we don't want any risk of snow and so on coming in. And I'm adding a touch of distance fog to act as a kind of heat haze. I'm also putting in volume lighting and light shaft effects at high resolution. Uh, and the reason for that is because the lighting in the forest there is really important. So I do want it to kind of burst through the trees at appropriate points. Next up, I want to put in some post-processing. So I'll create a post-processing volume. In this volume, I'm going to add some ambient occlusion because there's lots of bright light here, and so I do want some darkness in the shadows. But more importantly, I'm going to turn on the ACES tone mapping, which makes things look a lot warmer. And then I think the colors generally are a little bit too uh, washed out here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of gain into the bright greens there. And then finally, there's a lot of variation between the light outside the forest and inside the forest. So I'm going to increase the post exposure settings and raise the light levels just a little bit here and there. This video isn't about how to do post processing. Um, do grab the profile and have a look at what I've done in there in the final version. And there you have it, a complete scene with a fly through that we can then render at 60 frames a second like you're looking at right now. A few people have asked me about performance in game and optimization for that. I'll return to that topic fairly soon and show you some of the tricks that I've learned there. But for now, let's enjoy this beautiful tropical scene as is.